Hello students, I welcome you to this particular course, Full Stack Development course. In this particular course, I am going to be taking you from zero to hero in web development. We're going to be starting from the very beginning, from the scratch, until you become a professional. I'm going to take your, take your hands and walk you through the trends and the processes in web development. Follow me up at Lempro or follow my YouTube channel at Lempro Nigeria. Follow my Facebook and my Instagram pages and you will be getting some contents that will help you to build your career as a web developer. Now let's go straight to the course today. Um, web development can be quite difficult if you don't have a, a mentor. So I'm going to be your mentor. I'm going to mentor you throughout the whole journey to becoming a web developer. My name is Richard, and you are welcome to my YouTube channel. In this channel, I share contents around web development and the IT industries. So let's dive into the course. So in this course, we shall be looking at a lot of things, but they, I arrange them in modules. So we have 10 modules. And these 10 modules are going to take us like at least 10 weeks to complete. Yes, I said 10 weeks. The reason for making it a 10 weeks series is to help us build the whole content. We, we have enough time to discuss every single thing. This is not going to be like every other YouTube channel that you visit because we are going to take it from the very beginning. We're going to make sure that we leave nothing untouched. So the first module, we are going to be looking at the introduction to web development. After that, we will dive into basic command line operations. So we'll be looking at the Linux command line and the Windows command. Then when we are done with that, we go straight to HTML. After we are done with our HTML, we go straight to CSS. Then from CSS, we move to JavaScript. And then once we are done with JavaScript interactions, we move with to Bootstrap CSS. Now we wrap the front end with Bootstrap and we move into the back end with Python and then we move to the framework of Python that is known as Django. At number nine or the ninth module, we will look into how to deploy our applications and as well monitor it for quality assurance purposes. And then after that, we will now finalize it with the version control tools and DevOps fundamentals. So I would like you to stick around, make sure you follow up until the end of this course. Let's look into the module one. What are websites? A website is a collection of web pages that users can access through the internet using a web browser. A website is made, of, made up of so many web pages, and each of these web pages are written in a language that we call the HTML. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It is called Hypertext Markup Language because HTML is the building block of every website. Without HTML, there is no website. So take note of that. HTML is the 
basic language of the web. The H after you are done with the HTML, the HTML is a form of a document, just like your Word document, your pictures and all that. HTML is also a document, but it is specifically readable by the browser. So it is only the browser that have the ability to read the hypertext uh, documents, which are the HTML documents. Being a web developer, you will be more concerned with developing a website. So what is web development? Web development involves building and maintaining websites and web applications. It is a critical skill in today's digital age at its, as it, it enables businesses and organizations and individuals to establish an online presence, interact with users, and provide various services and information over the web. Of course, most of the things that you do today are centered on web. Most of you, you attended your classes, or most of your classes, just like this one that you are seeing now, is being done over the web. So web development is a very, very interesting course or profession to be in. Now, I've seen so many people misuse these terms, web development and web designing. Now, my question is, is web development and web designing the same thing? Do they mean the same? The answer is just glaring at you. So web designing focuses on the visual aesthetics and user's experience of a website. This includes elements like layout, color scheme, typographies, and imagery. So most of the things that you see on the website is designed by a web developer, sorry, a web designer. Now, a web designer uses some special tools or application softwares like Figma, Adobe XD, Photoshop, Adobe Illustration, CorelDRAW, or even Canva to make a diagrammatically, a, dia a diagram that we can look into and call it a website. So they, they help us to make a diagram as well as arrange it in a way that it fits in with what the user is expecting or expected to do within the website. So if you are making a website, you're not making that website for yourself, you're making it for your user. So the designer takes, it, takes into consideration how the users feel while making use of that application and then designs it and hands it over to the web developer. Now the web developer looks at these designs and then uses a series of codes to bring it to life. Now let me use an illustration in this to explain it better. If you want to build a house, the first thing you do is to get an architect. Now this architect is going to design how your house is going to look. He will design the interior and the exterior of the house. He will design the measurement of each of the rooms in the house. He can also go as far as designing how the cushions and other decors will be in, in the house. Now he gives that diagram to a civil engineer who then uses his experience to bring out that design into the physical house that we see. This is the same thing 
that a web designer and a web developer does. So a web designer is just like an architect, while a web developer is the engineer. <laughs> I hope that is clear. So the engineer brings out this design into a physical uh, software. So if you look at my slide, the skills that are required for you to be a web designer includes the understanding of principles and fundamental elements of designs like colors, color theory, typography, user interface, interface design, uh, uh, and um, the ability to use Figma, uh, Adobe Illustrator, uh, and uh, Photoshop and all that. But if you want to become a web developer, the skills that are required from you are coding skills, like the ability to code in HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Python, and any other programming language. The tools that we use as web developers include text editors and terminals, which we can generally call IDE, Integrated Development Environment. We will look into that later. Types of website. A website is of two types. So we have the static website and we have the dynamic website. Nowadays, most websites are dynamic, but we still have some websites that are static websites. Now, a static website is only written in HTML and CSS. It doesn't interact. It just, they use it to just explain what a particular company does. So most of the time, they are called portfolio websites. Most portfolio, portfolio websites are static websites because they only expresses what the individual does or what the company does. But a dynamic website interacts with the user and changes according to user's preference. For instance, Facebook. If you are assessing Facebook, you will notice something. The Facebook, your Facebook, and that of your friend have the same look, which is the user's interface. But when you take a critical look at it, you will notice that the content that you are being served is quite different from the content that the other person is being served. And that is what the dynamic website looks like. The dynamic websites are called web applications. The reason why it is called applications is because of its ability to interact with the users. Now, the, like I said, the static websites are written in HTML and CSS, while the dynamic websites are written in JavaScript, PHP, Python, Golang, C, ASP.NET, and any other programming language. <laughs> Let's look at the parts of a website. Just like we said, uh, the website is of two types, which are static and the dynamic. The front end is the part that controls what the user sees and how the user interacts. For instance, <laughs> If you go into a website, the colors that you, you are looking at, the text, the images that you are looking at are all the front end of such website. Whichever interaction that you meet up with are all front end. The front end is written in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now, HTML, like I said previously, is the building block. If you are the engineer and you want to build a house, you start by molding the blocks. When you mold the blocks, 
You now arrange the blocks and you seal it up with your um, cement and all that. The same way, while developing a website, you do the same structure using your HTML. After you are done with this structure, you now go ahead to beautify it, to make it beautiful so that it will be appealing to the users. When you are done making it beautiful, the website is just there. It doesn't interact. It doesn't move. It's just like that. You now add a programming language to it, which is the JavaScript. The JavaScript adds interaction to that website, making it to be able to interact with the users so that the, the users in your website will not be bored. So the JavaScript makes it feel like somebody is somewhere controlling what people does on that website. So that is what the JavaScript does. Now, if you look at this, the front end also includes creating the layouts, designing the buttons, menus, adding animation, implementing interactive features, while the back end is the server side logic and functionalities that powers the web. Without the server side, without, without the back end, there is nothing like a website. It's just like the engine. The back end is just like the engine house of the website. It controls whatever logic of how this front end are going to render each information. So the back end, what the back end does is that it goes to the database, retrieve whatever information that the users have or the users are requesting for, and then put up a particular series of instruction to guide the front end on what to display to the users. So without the back end, the front end is just a static building or a static website. So the back end helps to add the dynamic contents, making it to serve us with the contents that are according to the user's preference, whatever the user is seeking for. For instance, if I go to Twitter, I seek for a particular thing that is quite different from what the next person is seeking for. There are people that are looking for political talks on Twitter. But when I come to Twitter, I will always look for web development related or tech related uh, resources. And that makes Twitter to index me and then use information about my search to serve me with contents that are related with what I want to see. And that is what, why most of the time when you make a search on YouTube, you notice that every other time that you visit YouTube, they always serve you the same content or similar contents. And that is because of the server, the server logic. The logic behind the server makes it so. Now, the back end are written in languages like Python, PHP, JavaScript, Node, and so on. Ruby, Golang, C, C++, Java, and so on. So many other programming languages. The back end also gives instruction to the database servers on how to store, retrieve, update, and delete information from our servers. Finally, let us look at how the web works. How does the web work? Now, we have a browser, which I told you, is the special software that we use to read web document. And what are web document? The HTML. And what is HTML? Hypertext markup language. Most of the time, when you are browsing your websites, you notice that there is a particular 
key at the top. And when you click on that, it shows if the key is locked, it will show the website is secure. If the key is not locked, it will show that the website is not secure. Most of the time, if you click on the link, it will show you HTTPS or HTTP. Now, HTTP means Hypertext Transfer Protocol. So, which means that hypertext document, which is the HTML, is being transferred over a particular protocol. Now, the protocol is just a rule or instruction on how to serve whichever document that is being transferred from one computer to the other. If you understand the internet properly, you will notice that the internet is a connection of many computers that are linked together. So such a connection enables us to be able to share information from one computer to the other. And that is how, that is one of the basic things that powers the web. Now, when these informations are transferring from one computer to the other, there should be a set of rules and instructions to tell the other computer that is receiving the information how to serve or share that information. And that is the protocol. Now, people can tap in through this transfer of information if such transfer of information is not secured. So that is the essence of having the HTTPS, which, in other words, the S shows that the HTTP is encrypted. Now, what is encryption? Encryption is just a form of uh, having the information decoded in a way that another person cannot understand it. So even if the person tries to uh, peep into the, the information, they would not be able to interpret the contents of that information. And that is why we have the encryption. We will talk about SSL, TLS, and so on later on. But at this particular point, we need to understand how this information is transferred. If you look at my screen, this is the browser. And the browser is sending HTTP request to the server. So this is the server. Now this server is going to look into this information and then retrieve whatever information that the browser is seeking for. And once it retrieves it, it will send it back to the browser using a method that we call the HTTP response. And then this HTTP response reaches the browser and the browser records it at, and uh, at puts it as HTML document. So we'll talk about it later on on the back end. When we reach into the back end, we talk more on how this information is being transferred. But if you also look at my slide, you will see that we have the client, which is the web browser, and it sends a request to a server for a web, web page or resource. The server responds or the server processes the request and sends a response back to the browser. The browser receives the response and displays the web page or resources. At this point, we call it a day for our first module. In our next class, we will be looking at the second module, which is HTML. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click on the notification bell so that anytime that I make a video, you will be the first to receive an alert. Having said this, I will be expecting you, your questions down 
in the comment section. I'll be available to answer any questions that you have. At this point, I will say goodbye. Good night. Have a good, have a, have a nice day. Thank you.